Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Spice Plays Storybook Brawl. Today, 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 today we're going to be jumping right into a matchup and see what uh, see what hero we get. We see Geppetto, the Cursed King, Sad Dracula. Um, I am going to grab Geppetto. That gives us a couple options here, but uh, our best option with Geppetto is going to be to play some sort of creature spawn, creature summoning deck. Um, early good cards are going to be uh, the Donkey, the Cat, the Black Cat is a pretty good one for us here. Um, and then we're looking at our high end cards being like Bear Steam, that'll double the power of all of our summon creatures. Because we add, whenever we summon a creature, we add our attack and our health equal to whatever my level is. So this is a 1-1 one, one, and it spawns a 1-1, one, one, but we'll actually be summoning a 3-3. Three, three, which on turn 1 is pretty good. I think the only thing that beats us is a Humpty Dumpty. Or whatever that was. Crazy. Okay, uh, another option is dwarves. There are some dwarf, dwarven things here that we could use, but I'm going to stick with animals, I think, if I can. Let's reroll here. Nice. We've got another, got another cat. That's good. All right, so our cats are coming along well. Uh, there's also a creature that will let us find, uh, or it gains health anytime we summon an animal or buy an animal. I think that's a four drop, so we'll probably be looking for that when we get to it. Um, Princess Peep is another option, of course. Spawns three one ones when it dies. I believe that's a level three card. Uh... I could go and try and grab a treasure here with the blind mice, but I think I'm gonna roll, and I was rewarded for this roll. All right, let's take a treasure here. I guess we'll just take the locked chest, and then I'm actually just gonna buff the cat. Having a three three that will spawn a three three, not the worst thing in the world. Does probably put us a little bit behind right now, but uh, that's okay because it'll actually be semi-useful later in the game. Alright, next matchup. It's against the Fates. This is probably a tough one for us to win. Yeah. Eh, we're close though. We got him down to one guy, so we don't take too much damage here. Alright, there's a level up. Uh, when one of your evil characters dies, gain two uh, plus two plus two this brawl that's actually reasonable for us um, I'm gonna take it and I'm going to take mad men here I'm gonna go like this so that it's guaranteed to basically unless they have a flyer get plus four plus four I'm gonna lock this in so I can buy the other evil queen and re-roll next turn that seems seems correct to me Ah, uh, the timers. Timers get excessively long at some point in the game. Uh, unless you get... There's actually a treasure that gives you like 999 coins for one round. Um, I got that one time when I was playing a infinite spells deck. And man, it was crazy. We just kept going and going and going. And I did run out of time well before I ran out of coins. I, mean, I don't even know if I got 900 coins. But that was pretty funny. Okay, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. We should win this here. Nice. Alrighty. We'll definitely grab this Bella, and then we'll re-roll here. Eh, nothing great. We might just grab... We might just grab the, uh... Oh, we already cast her spell, that's right. Then we'll roll. We'll roll. There's a donkey. The donkey's pretty good early game. 
we might be coming up to the point where it's less useful. So I'm just going to keep rolling here, I think, and looking for something that I can use. Didn't get it. That's all right. We have a pretty reasonable setup here, I think. The uh, Queen of Hearts, both of these, are going to get pretty big throughout the game. So this will be plus uh, two, plus two, plus two, plus two. So it'll be three threes, then it'll be five fives. And then if Mad Men dies first, there'll be seven sevens, which at this point in the game is pretty good. Green Papa Pelican. Okay. So this is not great. We probably lose this game just based off the amount of damage this guy's doing. Yeah. That's all right. We're not in any rush to, to get to a point of anything. First character with plus 10 attack? Sure. Why not? Why not? There's a black cat that would summon another black cat. We'll actually grab it. And then I'll use a free roll. Uh, I mean, there's not really anything great here. I guess maybe I'll. Mm, I mean, I could buy the golden chicken. It's not super helpful though. I think I'm just gonna keep rolling. All right, there's a Princess Peep. So we'll just go ahead and lock in a Princess Peep here. All right, so this is good because the, that means we're gonna get uh, four dead, more than likely, four dead uh, evil creatures, which will give uh, plus eight, plus eight to both of these. And then of course, if Mad Men dies before them, they'll get another plus two, plus two. But having this, uh, Sting is actually pretty reasonable for us because our goal is to basically always keep this slot filled so that we're dealing just a ton of damage. Right, so we took out his biggest, baddest guy with our with our comeback story, with our kind of useless character. So that's that's good. That's good. Alright, we will take Princess Peep. Uh, I honestly wouldn't mind another Queen of Hearts here. Eh, that's not great. I don't think I actually want to go for this support. Um, there's a Queen of Hearts. Yeah, I think we just take it and then call it a day. So this is good because it's going to let us put... We'll take that. This is going to let us put... Uh, Princess Peep in the back row here, so we guarantee ourselves to have some extra slots. So that'll be nice. Okay. I think we got a pretty reasonable strategy. The Queen of Hearts now gains plus four, plus four anytime a creature dies. So this should be plus 16, plus 16. Sorry, an evil creature dies. So this should be plus 16, plus 16. Um, and then I'm doubtful that we will get any more than that. But there is a treasure, actually. I don't remember what level it is, but there is a treasure that makes all of your animals evil. And so if we could get that, then Princess Peep would actually be spawning evil sheep. Which in turn would proc the Queen of Hearts. All right, nice. That kind of sucks. Good. All right. Good work, good work. All right, looks like we're in a fairly reasonable spot. There we go, a bearded vulture. That is excellent for us. And the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus. This is a creature I was telling you about. Gains plus two health every time it spawns, uh, every time I spawn a creature or buy a creature. Um, do I roll or do I just buy the spell? 
Against Merlin, I don't think the spell's gonna do much good. Nice. So we definitely want the time flies. And I think that's the only one we want out of here. But yeah, I think that's all we want. So I'm gonna lock this in. And then I think what I'm gonna do next turn is probably feed the Kraken on Mad Men's. And that'll let me buy uh, the time fly and then continue to roll and just find pretty much any other animal that we can put down here. Um, but we're actually going to keep the time flies in our hand because if we do that, whenever one of my characters dies, it just summons onto the board, which will proc uh, the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus and it'll add another creature for the Bearded Vulture, which would be nice, of course. Alright, so Merlin's usually a pretty tough opponent. Let's see if he's got what we expect. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it is pretty similar. That sucks that we lose the Bearded Vulture right away. But I think we're actually going to be okay. Okay, that's fine. Nice. Got him. All right, that's good. That's a good sign that we beat uh, that we beat Merlin. All right, so let's unlock this. Devour the Mad Men. By the time flies. Okay, so this is an animal, but I don't think that's what we want. We've got enough money to keep rolling here. Not seeing too many. Good animals. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A hungry, hungry hippocampus is good for us here. And since he has more health, I'm going to leave him up front. That just sort of seems like the prudent thing to do, I guess. Uh, so that hopefully when we summon these guys, uh, both of these can get some health instead of having him up front where he can just get attacked turn one and basically kill something for free. Uh, and the other good news about that would be, hopefully, both of these die and both of their summons die. And so we can play the time flies for our hand, which would proc the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus again. But let's see how this turns out. Okay. Ooh, this guy's big. That's not great. Alright, well we at least got a couple procs off of this. So even though we're probably going to lose here, we at least get some good triggers. Yeah, we definitely lose this. We do get some good triggers, we do get some good procs, which is nice. All right. I don't think we want any of this. Definitely don't want any of this. What is this? Oh, that's the new art for Core Wizard. Um. Hopefully, we can find something that's useful for us. Not much going here. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. We'll just keep rolling, I think. This is not an animal now. Alright, well, there's something. Do we want to sell anything for it? I don't think so. I think we're just basically accepting the fact that we're gonna take some heat. Uh, I will use this. This is permanent if we win. I'll use this to buff the vulture, so hopefully it can last another turn. And I'm actually gonna do this. It might suck because if Princess Pete gets attacked first, then we only trigger one. But if we can get more than one trigger off of it, that would be really nice. Okay. There's a the time flies, nice. 
There's a Prince of Speed. So we do unfortunately only get the one animal triggered off of that. But we're looking okay so far. Yeah, the Baba Yaga is definitely a problem, but I think our Vulture is big enough. Yep. Good, good, good. Okay. So we're still in this, and now we can use this here. Um, ooh, this is a level 6. Characters in your shop have plus 10, plus 10. That's pretty good. And so is your front row characters have plus 15 attack. Because that means anytime we summon anything into our front row, it's going to have plus 15. I think I want the plus 10, plus 10, though, just because that's permanent. Well, I mean, if we summon something into our front row, this basically gives plus 30, plus 30. Or plus 30 plus zero because we're then summoning it into our front row so i'm gonna take that that seems really good for us i'll buy the vulture here there's a bear steam so we definitely want that but i don't think we can get it this turn oh wait no that's the one that's the sky it's not the bear steam i think bear steam's a little six uh, I guess I'll just play the other Vulture up front. Not really a reason to not do that, I guess. Then we can roll. 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 Not see anything we want. Okay. That's alright. That treasure, I think, puts us in a really good spot to effectively one or two shot anything that they throw up against us. Yeah, I mean, see how the time flies going into our front row? I mean, it just gets plus 15, plus 15 to its attack. So, that seems really good. Ooh, we can triple our vulture. That seems great. I don't think I want any of these, so I'll take the money. I'm just going to keep rolling here. Uh, Wombat's in disguise, I'm gonna random character, give it my attack and health. I mean, I could buy that. That's not terrible. I don't think it is anything else in level 5 that I really want. I wouldn't mind upgrading Princess Pete, but that's not actually that helpful. Two more Wombats in disguise. I don't have anything I want to sell for it, though. I don't think. I mean, maybe the cat. The cat's probably not as good. So we could go cat, take two damage for the gold, buy another one, lock it in. Don't love locking it in, but I think that's actually going to be okay. This is definitely going to be better in the long run just because it's bigger, and it has the possibility to give us something other than a 1-1, one -one, which is just better than the cat anyway. But boy, that plus 15, plus 15, or that plus 15 attack up front is going to be huge. That's huge for us. I think we actually have a chance of winning this game now. As long as Merlin doesn't get a huge cat or the uh, fixed cost creature. See, look at that. We got a 6221 cubit off of it. Yeah, this is good. And our Hungry Hungry Hippocampus is just getting absolutely huge out of this. So, this feels pretty good. Look how big our back row is. That's crazy. So, any time flies we're buying for sure. Um, I guess we can go ahead and buy this. Level 2 and 3 characters? No, I mean, we're... We're probably just looking for Bear Steen here, huh? Yeah, another Prince Peep would be nice, but we can also replace that with the uh, with the Angry Pigs. So I think I am going to buy uh, grab this treasure here. And then I might as well use this. I don't think there's any other spells that I really want to cast. Okay. So... I mean, I probably want to buy something here, right? Or we could just use it as a, as a guarantee to get two off of Princess Peep. That doesn't seem awful either. So I think I'm actually just going to roll. Okay, there's the three big pigs. We almost certainly want that. 
What is this? Oh, that's the Oni Tyrant. You are. Okay. I'm gonna lock in the three big pigs. That seems more than reasonable to me. So now whenever this thing summons something, it's gonna be huge. Yeah, so we ought to win this also. Oh, well he's dead, so we should win this regardless. But... There's three frogs. Good. So now we're probably looking at putting our Hungry Hungry Hippocampus up front here. Kind of like that. And now we pretty much just want maybe three big pigs and... Bearstein. Or time flies. Time flies works also. Good. So now we have a ton, a ton of ways to just summon creatures, particularly animals. And they're going to be evil animals from the three big pigs, which will in turn proc our uh, queen of hearts. So this feels like a really good setup. It really does. And the good news about having a, such a big guy up front, uh, a health central guy up front, is it'll protect these two, barring any flying creatures from our opponent. So that will be at least helpful from the sense of hopefully they can continue to build and get big before they have to attack. All right, this feels pretty good. This feels pretty good. We'll see how these last couple games go. Merlin, of course, is going to be a tough opponent. I'm not surprised he's the last one left. In my opinion, Merlin is the most consistently good hero. But I think Geppetto is actually up there, too, I would say. Peter Pan is up there, too. Ooh, he's so big. This is bad. This is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, not good. Oh, oh, Nian C Terror. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. Oh, he's got the summons. Oh, he's got the summons. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Yeah, this is not good. Maybe we can survive this. Okay, he's got one guy left. So we survive it, but I don't think we can win this game outright. Well, maybe if we buy an Echo Wood, it could get pretty big. If we go something like that. Because the Echo Wood says whenever one of your characters gains attack or health, so do I. And that would include off of summons. So that could be a way to do this. But we really just need a bear scene. I mean, I could just hope we survive and try and upgrade here. I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to buy one of these four cost characters to sell next turn. Hope that we're going to survive this. And then hit him with a big Echo Wood, hopefully late game. All right, because this way... Anytime one of these guys summons something else, it gains whatever the attack and health of that is. Plus, he'll be consistently gaining plus four there, and he'll be consistently gaining plus six, plus six from the Bearded Vulture. So that go with actually uh, definitely better than the Queen of Hearts. It just has to live through, like, a couple swings. And if it can live through a couple swings, it can really pop off. Boom. See, there's already 38-17. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I think we're gonna be okay. I think we're gonna be okay. Ooh, that's bad, but at least it didn't hit the Echo Wood. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Alright, we summoned three big figs. Yeah, our Echo Wood is just too big, I think, at this point. Well, 
It'll be close. Oh, we lose. Oh, but we're alive. But we're alive. Okay. 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 Uh, let's just upgrade the Echo Wood so it gains double. That's all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to sell this guy just to get a roll in here. And we're just looking for Bearstein at this point. That's all we want. I'll even sell the Queen of Hearts here to roll again. No Bearsteins. All right. Okay. That's all right. This is the game. The good news is we play against a AI here. Or a, a dead person. A dead person. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, I think we're going to want to get rid of Princess Peep for the bear scene and then put the three little pigs up front. But we have yet to see a bear scene. So I think it's probably just going to be roll, roll, roll next turn. Good news is, our Hungry Hungry Hippocampus is going to get even bigger off of this. Wow, we annihilated that guy. Alright, Bearstein. Ooh, Papa Bear. I think this might actually be better for us than Princess Peep. Forgot about him. Let's grab him for now. We might regret that. Unfortunately, we do play against this guy. There's another Echo Wood. Oh, man. I don't think we want to Echo Woods. I might just give plus 10 attack to the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus. I'm going to do that. Might be incorrect. Okay. That's it. That's the game. So there's a good chance we lose here. His dwarves are just so big. So strong. Just some thick dwarves. But uh, I think this is the best we can do here. And I'm actually going to put Baby Bear in the first slot because he summons two creatures versus just summoning one. So that'll be even better for our attack. Um, and then let's move the Hungry Hungry Ambo Canvas there. Yeah, this seems, this seems acceptable. I think this is what we got. Fingers crossed, we were close-ish last game, and hopefully the extra attack coming from the Echo Wood will be enough here. But, uh, I don't know. I don't feel great going into this matchup. If we were playing against Merlin, I think we would for sure win. Because we almost won without the upgraded Echo Wood. Yeah, that's not great. Alright, okay, we got rid of Angry, that's good. That's really good. His Echo Wood is huge! It's so huge! Oh, but we'll probably be able to one-shot it by the end. So we'll at least trade with it. So it just comes down to... Uh, what are these? Oh, these are Tweedledee and Tweedledum. That's why it's getting so gigantic. Yeah. Oh well, oh well. That was a pretty good run. That was a pretty good run. We went up against an insane dwarf deck, but that's okay. Third place, not terrible. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Swipe Plays Storybook Brawl.